What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Filmcast, a show where we reel you into movie news and talk about the things that we've been watching. I'm one of your hosts, Timothy DeRoe, and joining me this week is your boy, Michael Clare. What's up, Mike? What's up? You didn't do the action. Um, what? Oh, I did. It's because I was reading about how Michael K. Williams died, bro. Yeah. This is tragic. Mm-hmm. I like this guy. What? The Damn. guy who voices uh the main Michael... character in Up, he passed away a couple days ago, Michael too. Michael K. Yeah. Williams. What do I know him for? I know Michael K. Williams from The Purge? No way. That can't be it. It might be The Purge. Well, I haven't seen The Purge and Anarchy, so it's not that. 12 Years a Slave. Mm. That's what I know Michael K. Williams what from. Else is he in? Oh, and The Gambler, bro? He's also in the original Purge. Oh, yeah, so you oh, must know from that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Assassin's Creed. Robocop. He's in a lot of stuff. Damn. Django Unchained? All right, yeah. Yeah, he's in it. Inherent Vice. Wow. Excuse yeah, I didn't know that guy died. Doc. Well, anyway, yeah. Uh, today we're gonna start. exactly. <laughs> we're gonna rank Oliver and Company and rank the Little mm. Mermaid in our Disney rankings, and we're also gonna talk about some Shang Chi numbers. It's doing numbers, as they say. Mm-hmm. I gotta sneeze. <coughs> All right. Anyway, before we get into that, though, a little bit of housekeeping for you. Do you like this show? Today? Did, no, I'm just asking. No. Oh. Yeah. I'm asking you. Me. Them? Who? Jordan. What? Michael. If we... What the... Are we more than our thoughts? What? (laughs) That's what I'm I'm trying to say. You should consider supporting us on (laughs) Patreon at (laughs) patreon.com slash synced up. Where for $1 you can get access to the lovely Discord. um, Where we, we just do a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Playing Clash. Getting piped in Clash Wars. Talking about Shang Chi. Talking about Shang. Talking about Shang Chi. What are we gonna talk go about back today? And look at all the spoiler posts. Yeah, and for five dollars you get access to the post shows of all the shows that we do and many more goodies, all from youtubecom so the podcast and podcast services around the globe. The globe. New episodes of this show go up in all of those feeds Tuesdays, 7 a.m. Central, Central Time, Time Zone, Zone gang. gang. And you can write into the show to sync the pod at gmail.com or the reader mail submissions tab of the Discord with any questions, comments, concerns. We may read those on the show. I think you can make a cool 7 a.m. Central Time Zone gang shirt. Or maybe just yeah. Central Time Zone gang. Yeah, something like that. I feel like that'd be a cool shirt. I don't know how many would sell, but... I'll have to get my people on that. Plus, like, a lot of people that listen to our show don't live in a Central Time Zone gang. So, like, Spencer and Lucas are not in the Central no, Time Zone gang. No, but they might still cop the shirt. Maybe. I don't know. You should follow us on Twitter, at Sync to Pod, to keep up the date. Little... I did. To keep up the date with all of our content from across the board. <laughs> Sync to Pod. The, the Twitters. Now, let's talk about... It's a mess. Disney... What? Huh? Why this show? What's happening in this fucking house? I gotta re. I gotta regroup, recoup, reestablish, reestablish the, the energy. The energy. Your chakra. You know what? Let me just go for a sip of water. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's go for a sip of water. Maybe like ten seconds of silence. There's quick recap. No. Quick recap. Ready? That was good. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Thank you. All right, we're back. We're back. A uh, uh, moment of silence for. Uh, what are you gonna say? You know what? Whatever. Oliver and Company. This is a review from night. Actually, I gotta read the plot first. You know what, dude? We're all over the fucking place. This is, we're all over the place Bro, today. It's just Oliver Twist. It's it's Labor Day. It is. All <laughs> over the place. Did you say that into the mic? Was your mic on? <laughs> They're never gonna hear that. Damn, one. this money made this 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 movie made cash. It had Billy Joel and Bette Midler. And let's talk about the plot to Oliver and Company. We're gonna we're just gonna scope sc- scope skirt. I'm a dog Jesus. chasing cars. Exactly. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. Such a good movie. Anyway, <laughs> on Fifth Avenue, several kittens are left in a box outside a shop. All but one, one, an orange tabby, are adopted. Wandering the streets by himself in search of someone to adopt him, the kitten meets a laid-back mongrel named Dodger who agrees to help him steal food from a hot dog vendor. Dodger then reneges on the deal and flees with the hot dogs. The kitten pursues Dodger all over New York City until he eventually arrives at a barge where he sees Dodger share his meal with a gang of poverty-stricken dogs. Tito the Chihuahua, Einstein the Great Dane, Rita the Saluki, and Francis the Bulldog. Saluki. Yeah, I don't know what kind of dog that is. The kitten accidentally falls into the barge, startling the dogs. However, while they are annoyed, none of them harm him. Fagin, the bargeman and petty thief who owns the dogs, is indebted to Sykes, a nefarious loan shark and criminal. Sykes arrives and gives Fagin an ultimatum. Repay the money in three days or suffer violence, possibly even death. Sykes' two Dobermans, Roscoe and DeSoto, harass Fagin's dogs and threaten to eat the kitten until he scratches DeSoto's nose. 
earning Fagin and the dog's respect. Roscoe warns that they will try to exact revenge. The next morning, Fagin goes into a pawn, uh, to pawn some stolen goods while the dogs and the kittens try to steal more money for him. Through theatrical ruse, the animals stop a limousine belonging to the wealthy Foxworth family, but the attempt to rob the limo fails, and the kitten is taken by the child, Jenny Foxworth, who is missing her vacationing parents and desiring desires a companion. She names him Oliver and becomes very attached to him. Oliver makes himself at home in Jenny's house, much to the disgust of Georgette, the Foxworth family's spoiled prize-winning poodle. With her help, Dodger and the dogs manage to steal Oliver back from the Foxworth household, returning him to the barge. Fagin recognizes from Oliver's new collar and gold name tag that he had been adopted by a wealthy family and desperately decides to hold Oliver for a ransom. His anonymously written ransom note reaches Jenny, who sets out to get Oliver back at the pier. Jenny and Georgette meet with Fagin, who is shocked to be dealing with a little girl whose ransom money is a piggy bank. Bothered by his conscience and Jenny's tears, Fagin gives Oliver back freely. Sykes, whom Fagin had informed the deal beforehand, is watching from the shadows and kidnaps Jenny, intending to ransom her while declaring Fagin's debt paid. Dodger rallies Oliver and the other dogs to free Jenny from Sykes, but Sykes and his Dobermans confront them as they attempt to leave. Fagin saves the group with a scooter, and a chase ensues through the street. <laughs> what a weird... He saves him with the scooter. And a chase ensues through the streets and onto the subway tunnels. Jenny falls from the scooter into Sykes' car. Oliver and Dodger go after her and battle Roscoe and DeSoto, who fall off the car and are electrocuted on the third rail of the subway. Fagin leaves Tito to, uh, Tito to drive and saves Jenny, while Dodger and Oliver are thrown from Sykes' car onto the pavement just before an oncoming train strikes and kills Sykes. Straight murders that man. Oh, yeah. Blown Tito up. drives the scooter to safety, and Jenny and Oliver are reunited. Later, Jenny celebrates her birthday with the animals, Fagin and the family butler, Winston, who receives a phone call from Jenny's parents saying that they will be returning from Rome the next day. Oliver, it's said that they're, they're in Rome? That's like a thing that they said? Maybe. I think we were told they were in Rome earlier in the story. Maybe. And they just said they were coming back. I guess so. Oliver opts to stay with Jenny, but he promises to remain in contact with Dodger and the gang. The gang. The Spoiler. gang. Now, let's let's talk about what they thought about at the time. In 1988. 1988. New York Times. Bette Milder's talent is radioactive. Midler? It can seep... What? Milder's? Oh, I... Midler. Yeah, that's dyslexia. Bette Midler's talent is radioactive. It can seep through anything except possibly a lead shield. Lead. <clears throat> and I'd like to say... Oh, yeah, no shit. This was the start of the review. They didn't introduce anything. They just started talking about Bette Midler immediately. Okay, all right, fair enough. That was the first enough. thing they did. Even when she is disguised as a Vane Park Avenue poodle whose territorial instincts are overwhelmed by her sexual needs, Miss Midler and her bigger-than-life performing personality cannot be hidden. In addition to Miss Midler, Oliver and Company has a handful of other attractive things to offer, two good songs and the voices. These include Mr. Joel's singing Dodger's Big City Creed, Why Should I Worry, Cheech Marin's voice as a hyperactive chihuahua named Tito, and Mr. DeLewis's as Fagin, who, when he is marked for a Termination by Sykes warns his canine charges. Remember, dead men don't buy dog food. The screenplay they're they're praising the the homeless guy. Yeah, are you I, not? I don't know. I thought it was okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, it was good voice acting. The screenplay, while not great, is certainly serviceable, especially in the way that it allows the actors to express their known personalities within animated figures not a, of the first order. Oliver and Company is being touted as the first in a new series of animated Disney features to use state-of-the-art computer techniques. And whatever the way the film was put together, however, Oliver and Company looks cheesy and second-rate. The animation is somewhat better than the usual stuff seen on a Saturday morning television, but not by much. It is totally without distinctive visual style, suggesting only the sort of bland cartoon drawings one finds in a manual of first aid instructions. God damn. In addition, the animation itself looks cheap, sometimes as primitive as those early pre-Disney black and white cartoons in which the foreground characters moved against the frozen backdrop. It is comprehensible... It is incomprehensible how Oliver and Company could have issued from the studio that set the standards by which all animation films have been judged for nearly 60 years. I should think that Walt Disney, wherever he is, might be having a gigantic all-stops-out Donald Duck-type tantrum. It's not all that Oliver and Company is not up... It's not that Oliver and Company is not up to par. It actively denies its own unique heritage. God dang. They did not like this movie at the time. No, they didn't. I thought it was a good movie. Yeah, I think it wasn't... It didn't feel Disney, though. Mm -mm. I, I agree with the like the animation sure it's I mean it's okay we've seen a lot of crappy animation going through this and so yep. this was like more pseudo 3D was, stuff yeah I think it was not my favorite style I yeah. think I still like the style like the rescuers more mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't terrible yeah um, I wrote a couple of notes here I, yeah I thought the acting was voice acting was good turned yeah, up a notch it felt now like a, it, it felt clean sometimes yeah. the voice acting before had sell, sounded uh, or choppy or just like mixed yeah. wrong or it was just felt, old. Felt now good. It feels like we're up to modern. And yeah, then the, the songs in this movie were pretty good. Why should I worry? Yeah. I mean, you got Billy Joel singing in the streets. So the first good. song, 
You got Huey Lewis in the beginning. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And then I just put that there's more more pseudo 3D shit, like when the panning mm -hmm. around the car, panning around the girl as she plays the piano. Which, when you go into the subway station, it completely changes. Yeah, it's like a whole different art style and stuff. Is yeah. weird stuff. Bring up the list, Jordan. Bring up that list, bad boy. I still <laughs> enjoyed this movie though. I thought it was good. I thought the characters were good. Yeah. Um, like they just Sweet had more life opera. and charm to them than than yeah. most. Let me let me pull up my personal rankings too. All right. We're placing in movie 19 here. Crazy. 19 movies. Already. I know, bro. About we, to be 20. We've watched that. a lot. We're almost halfway. We're almost halfway. Would I like to save 40% on my upgraded subscription to Evernote? No. 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 Okay. Um. So. I know where I have this. Where are we going to plot this bad boy? Let's see where I want to place it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Boom. I don't, I don't do it, but I do this shit off the cuff, boy. It's tough. Because of how different my ranking, my boom, personal boom, is to the, boom, to the one boom, up there. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. The, the thing is, I think it's better than Robin Hood, but worse than The Rescuers. Because that's how my rankings are. Yeah, but it's, uh, yeah. So it's three for me. In my boom, overall boom, rankings. Boom, 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 Bro, boom, stop boom. it. Sorry, dude. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm Trying to think if I want it above a certain hum it, movie hum it or not. Song. That's a, that's my qualm here. Not the, do I want it above that, that movie? Why should I worry? Or not? Nah. Which movie? Do you want it above Aristocats? Is what you're saying? No. Are you much further down? Not much further down. Um. Better than GMD or Fox and the Hound? Mm -mm, I would put it at number five. You're thinking number five? Yeah. Then I think it goes at number four. Then it goes at number four. Because I don't think it's better than The Rescuers. But I think it's as high as it can go up without being better than The Rescuers. Yeah. So I, I think, yeah. It, think it, it goes at four. <laughs> I don't know. This one has felt the most, or the, the least Disney. And so it's so weird to like yeah. compare it to the, these other ones. that are It's definitely like, odd, especially when you see where we're show. about to go on this next one. Oh, yeah. And I think it's, it's going to be odd. easily um, placed as well. In my opinion. So now it's time to rank and talk oh. about The Little Mermaid. Of course, classic. This is where we got the first. The Oliver and Company was the first Disney intro. Little Mermaid was the first oh, yeah. 3D Disney intro with the you get the, the full fireworks. You get the, um, what would you call that? It's like a the, the, the Disney, Disney castle. castle. Hello. The Disney castle with the bars. Um, That iconic intro. I, I missed it. I don't know. What? What do, what do you mean? You missed it? No, I like I missed that intro. Like you missed it? Like longed for it? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't Where know. Where were you at? I don't know. Like you didn't see it? Like you see, I don't know. This is weird. You Gucci bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, dude. Uh, it went 3D in in uh in uh um, how to the Little Mermaid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh it's been man. a long weekend. It went 3D in Little Mermaid. It went to the one where it's like, and the fireworks. I don't remember that. Yeah. With zooming out? Yeah. No way. Yeah. I will go rewatch the beginning yeah. of it right do it, now. Do it right now. I'm telling okay. you. You you can tell your plot. Do. Hurry up. Do it. Do I have Disney Plus on here? Do you have Disney Plus on your phone? Uh, No, I don't. Oh, there it is. I see it. Oh. I don't know. Oh, wait. Do I? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I have it. Hold up. We're going in. For some reason, I thought I didn't. Mike's checking. Disney Plus. It does the iconic thing. The Disney Plus. We're going in. It's the Little Merman. Continue watching. What if? Luca? Because you want. Why am I not just searching? Yeah, dude. Why are we scrolling? Why are we scrolling um, on this here pod? This? You the can tell your thing. You little. Tell no, your we're thing. going in. All right. You're waiting. Clicking it. Play. Click and play. Watching. All right. Gonna come down. <laughs> Okay, no. This is not the animation that originally played with it. This has to have been updated at some point. It's I googled it and it said all the original movies are what's on Disney Plus. <clears throat> no, this has to be an updated version of some kind. I don't know, dude. What's the next movie? The next movie is um That that animation is Rescuers not, 2. That animation does not exist in 1989. I don't know, man. There's no way. I think it's uh, well the it is an updated version of the movie. I, when I Googled it, it said it was all the OGs. I'll get into it later. But that it, it is an updated film of the original. The rescue is down under. Same. Right? Oh, no, we're yeah, back. Yeah, it goes back. Damn. I'm telling you, that's not the original intro. So, 
Damn, so it's an updated version of the film. So it's not the original film. I think I've been trying to watch the all the original. I think I know why because me and my mom talked about it. What? I'll get to it. Oh, okay. Has to. Never mind. What? Don't worry about it. We'll All right, there. cool. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was just weird. Well, I did too. That sucks though, because then I, I, I was I want to stay OG. I was like, man, this looks really good for the '90s. Yeah, that it, shit, it, nah, it that shit real for the '90s. Yeah, that's god damn like, it. That's like the now it's hard to talk about that. Anyway, the plot of Little Mermaid. Sixteen-year-old mermaid princess Ariel is dissatisfied with underwater life in the kingdom of Atlantica, a fantasy kingdom in the Atlantic Ocean. She is fascinated by the human world. With her best friend Flounder, Ariel collects human artifacts in her grotto. She ignores the warnings of her father, King Triton, the ruler of Atlantica, that con- contact between merpeople and humans is forbidden. One night, Ariel, Flounder, and Horatio, Thelonious, Ignatius, Crustaceous, Sebastian, a crab who serves as Triton's advisor and court composer, travel to the ocean surface to watch a celebration for Prince Eryx, um, whom has been trying to find her birthday on a, uh, who's been trying to find her birthday on a ship. Ariel falls in love with Eric. A violent storm arrives, wrecking the ship and knocking Eric overboard. Ariel rescues Eric and brings him to shore. She sings to him but leaves him just as he regains consciousness to avoid being discovered. Fascinated by the memory of her voice, Eric vows to find the girl who saved and sang to him, and Ariel vows to find a way to join him in his world. Discovering change in Ariel's behavior, Triton questions Sebastian about her behavior and learns of her love for Eric. An outraged Triton travels to Ariel's grotto and destroys her collection of artifacts. Shame. After Triton... What? Shame. Oh, after Triton leaves, two eels named Flotsam and Jetsam convince Ariel to visit Ursula the Sea Witch. Ursula makes a deal with Ariel to transform her into a human for three days in exchange for Ariel's voice, which Ursula puts in a nautilus shell. Within these three days, Ariel must receive a kiss of true love from Eric. If Ariel gets Eric to kiss her, she will remain a human permanently. Otherwise, she will transform back into a mermaid and belong to Ursula. Ariel accepts and is then given human legs and taken to the surface by Flounder and Sebastian. Eric finds Ariel on the beach and takes her to his castle, unaware that she is the one who had rescued him earlier. Ariel spends time with Eric, and at the end of the second day, they almost kiss but are thwarted by Flotsam and Jetsam. Angered at Ariel's close success, Ursula disguises herself as a beautiful young woman named Vanessa and appears on shore singing with Ariel's voice. Eric recognizes this song, and in her disguise, Ursula casts a hypnotic enchantment on Eric to make him forget about Ariel. The next day, Ariel discovers that Eric will be married to Vanessa... Uh, Scuttle, a seagull who Ariel visits and offers inaccurate knowledge of human culture, discovers Vanessa's true identity and informs Ariel, who immediately pursues the wedding barge. Sebastian informs Triton, and Scuttle uh, Scuttle disrupts a wedding with the help of various sea animals. In the chaos, the nautilus shell around Ursula's neck is destroyed, restoring Ariel's voice and breaking Ursula's enchantment over Eric. Realizing that Ariel is the girl who saved his life, Eric rushes to kiss her, but the sun sets and Ariel transforms back into a mermaid. Ursula then kidnaps Ariel. Triton converts Ursula. confronts Ursula and demands Ariel's release, but the deal is inviolable. inviolable? At Ursula's urging, Triton agrees to take Ariel's place as Ursula's prisoner, giving him his trident. Ariel is released as Triton uh, Triton transforms into a polyp and loses his authority over Atlantica. Ursula declares herself the new ruler, but before she can use the trident, Eric intervenes with a harpoon. Ursula attempts to kill Eric, but Ariel intervenes, causing Ursula to inadvertently kill Flotsam and Jetsam. Enraged, Ursula uses the trident to grow to monstrous size. Ariel and Eric reunite on the surface just before Ursula grows past the towers over them. She then gains full control of the entire ocean, creating a storm and bringing sunken ships to the surface. Just as Ursula is about to kill Ariel, Eric com- commandeers a wrecked ship and kills Ursula by impaling her with a splintered bow sprit. With Ursula dead, Triton and the other polyps and Ursula's garden revert to their original forms, realizing that Ariel truly loves Eric. Triton willingly changes uh, her from a mermaid into a human permanently and improves her marriage to Eric. Ariel and Eric marry on a ship and depart. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada boom. What did they think at the time? In 1989, almost to the 90s. We'll be in the 90s when we get to the rescues down under. We've made it 50 years now. Deep, deep 60. We're in it. 60, 1937 to 1989. Whoa. 50. Oh, so 52, 52. The heroine of Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Mermaid, failed in her bid to become human and became a disembodied spirit relegated to spending centuries in limbo. The Little Mermaid, a glorious Walt Disney version of this tale and the best animated Disney film in at least 30 years, is due for immortality of a happier kind. The Little Mermaid is a marvel of skillful animation, witty songwriting, and smart planning. It is designed to delight film goers of every conceivable stripe. While The Little Mermaid evokes other Disney films at times with its handsome prince, its wicked witch, its twin evil fish that might as well be Siamese cats, and its wise little Jamaican voice character named Sebastian, who functions as a Jiminy Crab, it is also distinctly modern. The color palette is less primary, leaning more toward fuchsia, turquoise, magenta, orange, and amber hues that make the film look vibrant and new without becoming garish. The characters, though they retain their fundamentally innocent, their fundamental innocence, are more savvy than those found in the traditional Disney fare. 
The heroine, a mermaid named Ariel, is even capable of wit, which is more that could ever be said of Snow White or Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. I just don't see, she sighs, waving a fork sh uh, salvage from a shipwreck, how a world that makes such a w wonderful things can be bad. Speaking on part of your world, any Broadway musical would be lucky to include a number this good. The Little Mermaid has half a dozen of them. The film's show-stomping songs are the two are are the two delivered by Sebastian the Crab with the lifting voice of Samuel E. Wright and danced by a dazzling array of aquatic creatures. The jubilant Calypso number Under the Sea starts slowly and builds up to a, a riot, a riot, riotously, riotously, riotously colorful crescendo, riotously, 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 riot. Righteously, righteously, <laughs> righteously, colorful crescendo, and the lullaby like kiss the girl and list lagoon wildlife for a gentle serenading of the prince and Ariel during their brief courtship. Anyone who dreads the usual sing song, uh, saccharine musical interludes to be found in children's films will find these a particular treat. They so they were it. high on that hope. They could tell back then that this was the one. Yeah, it's a good ass movie. And they sniped the two songs, the two biggest songs. Mm -hmm. Kiss the girl. Yeah, under the sea. They're all really good songs. They all. This whole movie got good songs. Um, I think this is the first Disney move, not the first Disney movie, but you start to see like getting into that modern era where there's like a lot more songs, ton more songs. Or there's less like, yeah, yeah, it's more of a musical than just a, yeah, we're getting a lot more songs than before. I think the original was like a complete score to the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we kind of got into no songs, a few songs, a few songs, and but all not, the, like musical songs. Yeah, and, and now we're the, back into all the critiques were like, there's not enough songs. Yeah, and now this is like a full musical. Yeah, there's it's, there's a fuck ton of songs. Yeah, a ton of songs. All, they're pretty much all good. They're pretty good. I don't mm -hmm. have a lot of problems with this movie. It's pretty good. It's a good movie. Yeah, no real qualms here. I got one qualm though. What's your qualm? Just the plot. What week? The ending. What he stabs her with the ship? Yeah, the ending. It's just more of a nitpick, not an actual problem that can be critiqued, I don't think. Um, but it's just like, and I guess it was the it was eighty nine, so it's a little different. But like it, it feel it feels like a slight towards Ariel to have like the like it wasn't her that conquered her problems. Like she didn't end up like killing Ursula and doing oh, all this stuff. Well, it had to be yeah, Eric just swooping and doing it. That's a big thing it. until like yeah, Frozen. And so that's like know. the only thing that I have where it's like, man, like what the fuck? And I listened to a, a podcast um, by. Uh, What's the guy, dude? Uh, Malcolm Gladwell, where he actually interviews lawyers and stuff, mm -hmm. and they rewrite with a playwright and a lawyer rewrite the ending to The Little Mermaid, mm -hmm. and they talk about how like, you know, the contract, the legally binding and unvoidable or whatever, whatever. And they talk about like in the eyes of American law that that's like bullshit. <laughs> it's like no, it's totally, and it's like mm -hmm. just a weird like funny breakdown of it. But they talk about the ending and they name that same thing where it's like oh. It's weird that Ursula, that uh, Ariel couldn't solve her own problem. So they rewrite the ending and kind of do like a play version of it in the podcast. And it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I think it would have been cool if it was more like Eric uh, hits her with the ship or something. Ursula drops the, the Triton. Yeah. Ariel goes and picks it up. and Because she essentially just became a damsel. Like she's the main character. And then even in the end, even yeah. though she's the main character, she became a side piece to. Like, well, even while I'm watching it, I'm like, how do they beat Ursula when she's this big? Oh. Eric with a ship. Yeah. <laughs> and Eric. Yeah. Eric. The this the prince. Yeah. Anyway, bring up that list there, bad oh. boy. What? You wanted to know why they probably had to use a different thing. My mom texted me and she was like, Hey, when you finish it, I want to see if you notice something. It they might have changed it or removed it, but I want to see if you notice it. Yeah. The priest during the wedding scene, mm -hmm. the original one with Vanessa and Eric. Yeah. Man's got a heart on. Oh. Yeah. And he's just, it's just animated there. Because this is when we get into the era of like weird disney sex in the windows in the background of the films yeah um and so i think they removed that mm. in an updated version of it so the the reason we have that newer intro is because it's an updated version it's of the, film. the updated film i don't know why else it would be like that yeah that's because all the rest of them are the ogs yeah yeah even and and they didn't well like even when it was uh the the insensitive ones yeah they just they were like little... we, we left it yeah that one though that's a reason yeah you don't leave that in <laughs> yeah. if that's what's in there oh we got a boner yeah. Weird. So, I wouldn't watch the original clip. It's there. It's kind of right. weird. Fair enough. So, number one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the best one. Easy peasy number one. I don't one. think it's really a discussion. Yeah. I it's going to get real spice once we start getting to these, because we're in the golden age, I think, at this point. Oh, yeah. I, that's what I'd call it, too. The golden age. I mean, you get rescuers down under after this. Um, yeah. So, which I think is the last of that kind of era. Yeah. Then it's, it's rescuers down under, and followed by Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, Pocahontas, Hunchback, Hercules, Mulan, Tarzan. So, the list. As follows. Yeah. From the, uh, from the... We'll go from the bottom. Yeah, go from the bottom. Snow White, mm -hmm. Dumbo, Peter Pan, 
Bambi, The Black Cauldron, Sleeping Beauty, Alice in Wonderland, Pinocchio, Sword in the Stone, Jungle Book, Top 10, Lady and the Tramp, Cinderella, 101 Dalmatians, The Great Mouse Detective, The Fox and the Hound, Top 5, Oliver and Company, The Rescuers, Aristocats, Robin Hood, and Little Mermaid. I foresee most, if not all of these, shifting down about 10 spots over the course of the next 10 films that we watch. Yeah, I don't know if, if Robin Hood can... Keep up. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any of these that are not going to be as good as Robin Hood. I haven't Robin seen Hood. Rescuers Down Under. Um, That's the only one I'd be like, I Yeah, but know. like Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King. But I love the Rescuers. Maybe in retrospect, Pocahontas. Maybe in retrospect, Tarzan, but I doubt it. But even then, Pocahontas still has good songs. Yeah, we'll have to see. But there you go. There's your, so far, the 20, 20 movies ranked. Next week, we'll be watching uh, The Rescuers Down Under, followed by The Beauty and the Beast. Ooh. That's a that's a favorite of the Claire household. Yeah, it's super good, super good. Honestly, so is the Little Mermaid. It's my dad's favorite, I think. Yeah, it's really or good. Ariel's his favorite friend. Yeah, something. Like good that. stuff. One little news item here: Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is off to a pretty heroic start at the box office. Big money. Marvel Studios' newest character debuted at number one in the U.S. with a hefty Labor Day weekend haul, a holiday that often sees slump in sales rather than a bump, pulling in seventy one point four million and an extra fifty six point two million internationally in its first weekend. As for the UK haul, it earned 5.76 million pounds from Friday to Sunday, the biggest UK opening post-COVID. Currently, estimates have it at the have it that the total box office tally so far comes to 139.7 million dollars. That seems like a low number to me. Um, maybe just look up like Iron Man three box office. Yeah, Iron Man three topical. Yeah, box office. Iron Man three box office. 1.215 billion. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. Well, that's you also got to remember pre-COVID. You also got to remember Robbie Downey Jr. Yeah, I wonder what the Shang Chi budget was. Uh, probably it's more than be. it's made so far. Oh yeah, for sure. But I'm just curious. Um, uh, ended up spending around 150 million. 150 million. How Not is, bad. How is Iron Man three more? Iron Man three more. Yeah, Iron Man three had a bigger budget. Uh, you're paying Robert Downey Jr. I guess the actors. Yeah, I mean Robert Downey Jr. was very very At expensive. That point, yeah, he was pulling sixty mil a film. But did so. you? Who else did you have in that? You got Don Cheadle. Yeah. Um, who's pulling a decent amount? Was there any other big cameos in that one? Not sure, but but Robert Downey Jr. alone is pulling a third of oh, your film's budget. Yeah. So. At that point, yeah. Like so that's post Avengers. Mm-hmm. He's so. he started pulling there in the late era started pulling 50 60 million a movie. Mm-hmm. So. so because of these su- successful sales for Shang-Chi, I guess the people at Sony decided to bump up. Yeah. Uh Venom let there be carnage up to October 1st. Yeah. which is the fifth date move mm-hmm. for Your this Venom? movie. Yeah. <laughs> which weird. I'm, it's I'm, It's good that Shang Chi, uh, one hundred thirty nine point seven million opening weekend. Like, th- let's look at the bu- let's look at the um. Also, I'm shocked Labor Day Iron is a Man three is a slump and not a bump. People are at the lake and shit. People are doing what about family people who things. Don't go to the lake. Oh yeah, okay. Opening weekend Iron Man three hundred seventy five million. Okay. So this makes sense. We're talking about an Asian led movie, new a character. nobody, Sammy Lu, a nobody. Yeah. Also a new character. New character, which if you're in regards to the comic book world, even in the comic book world, a minor character. Because I'm talking to my mom about it, and she has no idea who Shang-Chi is. Right? Yeah. So uh, she, you know, Spider-Man and stuff. That's Spider-Man. Everybody yeah. knows Spider-Man. Everybody knows Batman. Shang-Chi, nobody knows. I bet you there's a bunch of people in the world that don't even know that this is MCU. They're just like, this is a Shang-Chi movie. Mm-hmm. Like, so $139.7 million for the the uh, so uh, the uh, the total box office so far, 139.7. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and you've seen a really big drop off um, with uh, they talked about it in this article that I that I quoted for this about how Black Widow dropped off pretty hard. It's still less than Black Widow, but Black Widow like peaked really early and dropped off aggressively. Yeah. Um, that's also worth noting. No Disney Plus for Shang Chi. Right. So, yeah, so you can only see this movie. In you can only see it in the theater. So I foresee a, this. This is a success story. This is a success yeah. story for sure, which is good to hear for the future of the MCU. I thought COVID when was going to hurt you the MCU. Talk about it later in the show. Yeah, we'll talk about it towards the end. That way, we don't spoil it because we're going to spoil it. Okay, we'll do so, it after read our mail. Yeah. Anyway, do we want to watch this Moonfall trailer? I mean, we've watched it. Yeah. yeah. We can watch it again. I don't care. It's up to you. Cool. Um, I don't know. It doesn't. No, we don't have to watch it. It's not. It's not from the guy who made a from the guy who made Independence Day. New spooky sci-fi movie. Yeah. Moonfall looks cool. Very, now, 
very transformery with let's, the soundtrack. Let's talk about the other stuff we've been watching. What you been watching? Before we get into Shang Chi, not Shang Chi. Yeah. So of course, been watching more Sharp uh, Sharp Objects with Amy Shh, Adams. Objects of Sharp. The sharp. Uh, got two episodes right. left. It's pretty good. Very enjoyable. Is it over? No. I got two episodes left. No, I mean like, is it over? Oh, like the show? Yeah, yeah it's a mini series. Okay. Yeah, it's done, done. Okay. Then we watched that Bob Ross documentary. Good. Sad shit, bro. Sad, bro. Come on, man. How are you gonna do Bob Ross like that? If you haven't watched this Bob Ross uh, Happy Accidents Something in Greed, can't remember what it's called. Um, it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Go watch it, man. If it's you, good. It, it's good to just to be like, oh man, this is Bob Ross. It's great. Mm -hmm. But also to see what they did to Bob Ross, it's like, damn. So we boycotted Bob Ross Company. Yeah. Fuck Bob Ross Company. All the homies hate Bob Ross Company. We only support um, Etsy artists who are ripping off Bob borrowing. Ross. Yeah. And we we support Stephen Ross. Steve Ross. Yep. yep. And I don't remember. His uh, name. Uh, Dana something. I can't remember. Yeah. Dana and the Jenkins. And the Jenkins. Yeah. The Kowalskis. Oh though? yeah. Fuck the Kowalskis. Yeah. Me I and my homies hate the Kowalskis. I agree with him. But the Jenkins hold it down. The Jenkins are nice. Hold they, it down. They paint nice flowers. They do. And then of course yeah, we watched What If. We did. Which I caught up. Wait. Let's do reader mail. We'll spoil What If, and then we'll spoil Sing Chi. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Yeah. Did we, did we talk about What If last week? Uh, no, because you hadn't watched that okay, episode I was yet. Behind. Um. So let's talk about reader mail before we get into this. Uh, this... No, you were a week behind. Was I? Oh, uh, yeah, I was yeah, a week yeah. behind. That's right. That's right. So Lucas writes in: Are there older media franchises that you would like to see undergo a modern revival? We, we talked about this last week. Oh, though. did we? Yeah. Bro, I, in my mind, I was sitting there staring at it. And in my mind, I had copied and you pasted it. You couldn't tell if it was deja vu or if it was... No, I didn't... I had n zero recollection of answering this question. Really? Not a single... Yes, we talked... Fucking, I said uh, Narnia. Yeah. Damn. Now it's hit me. Yeah, we didn't. No, this, this is a new one. This, this is a new one. Um, Spencer writes in, is there a studio you adore, uh, but go back to watch their catalog and just couldn't get into it? For me, I love Futurama and tried to go back and watch The Simpsons and did not like it. Studio? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's not really a thing I, that I do. That I, I watch a thing and I'm like, oh, like I sometimes do it with directors where I'm like, actors. that was good. Like Bong Joon-ho and stuff like that. I've done it with back. actors too. Yeah. Like Florence Pugh. You're like, oh, now I want to watch every Florence Pugh movie. Yeah. But with studios, no, not Marvel. really. Not really. I don't really have that. I don't either. Like watching Futurama and enjoying I'm to it. Think of a, like animation studios. I couldn't even told you that the people who made Simpsons made Futurama. I didn't even know that. So. Is there any animation studios? No. Most of all that stuff, just if I'm watching it now, I watched it then. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I, yeah. Mm. I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any directors. That I was like, oh, I love his stuff. I want yeah. to watch all his movies. Like Damien Chazelle. And then I found out he has two movies. Yeah. Uh, I still want to go watch like all the Takai. Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi, yeah. I want to go watch his, his movies stuff. movies are good. But Jojo Rabbit is fire. I want to see the... Fire. All the people Jojo like Rabbit. Him. Of course, I've seen Jojo Rabbit. Fire. The movie's great. Uh, the What We Do in the Dark. I think that's his. I don't even know what that that's is. That's like a cult classic film of his. I guess, I guess. That I haven't watched yet. That I still want to watch. What's it? Let me look it up. I want to. I want to be. But that's it for reader mail. I should have said the spiel that she could write in this thing to pot at gmail .com or the what or the do? reader mail submissions tab of the what Discord, we the just like Spencer and Lucas did. What Based adapted from what we do? Tag with TD. What? Who? Who? I think it's I think it's this I think it's what we do in the show uh, based on the feature film the same name. You got a ninety seven. Okay, well it's a show, and then there was a movie in twenty fourteen. That's seven point seven. Who 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 did the movie? Taika. Are right? you sure? I'm I don't know what's going on. That's not. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, okay, bro. cool. He also plays in it, bro. He plays He's in everything that he directs. Yeah, dude, he was in Suicide Squad. Damn. He honestly had my favorite scene in Suicide Squad too. <laughs> He's good. He's good. He's a good guy. If even the Robin Now let's spoil uh, yeah, what if in Shang Chi. Wanna start with what if? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start with what if. So we didn't talk about it last team. week, so it was what if something happened to the world's what mightiest if? heroes? Heroes. <laughs> what if the Cheerios? Hank um, Pym. Yeah, Hank Pym. What if he went crazy because uh Nick Fury sent his uh daughter, daughter. on a mission and she died? Mm -hmm. And so Hank Pym came back and was like, What's up? what's going on? And he was like invisible. Yeah, man, it's just going crazy. It was pretty cool because it was like right off the rip. Oh, we're off the rails. Yeah. Team like, up with wh Loki. How, what is that? Where do we go from here? Yeah. Loki came to conquer Earth because Thor got murdered. Kind of shocked that Thor just died from one arrow. Yeah. <laughs> a little weird. I was like, but really? remember at that point, no powers. Yeah. But still, I figured he had some. He's, at that point, he's just a burly man. 
Yeah, but one arrow is all it took. Hawkeye's Fr- from good. Hawkeye. Uh, I, fair, fair point. From Hawkeye. So yeah, there was that. Which I don't cool. remember that how that one ends though. It, they... it ends with him teaming up with Loki, and then the Loki thing. takes over. Loki takes over the world. Yeah, and he's like, "You will guy, I've I conquered the world and unified the world government in three days." Yeah, Whatever. got a little dark. Yeah, I did. Where I mean, you're just watching all your favorite superheroes die. Yeah, I didn't expect to go back to the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, because was... I forget that that's in that timeline. Yeah, like at, happening at the same time. Yeah, and normally it's that girl up there with him, but instead it was, uh, Black Widow. Black Widow. Yeah, it's. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I liked it. Um, the next one I liked a lot more, though. What if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands? Mm-hmm. Which starts off very sad and dark with him going back in time over and over and over and over and over again to save the girl. Because instead of him breaking his hands in the wreck, he loses his girlfriend. Yeah. And he keeps going. He becomes the Sorcerer Supreme guy. But then he keeps going back in time to try to change it. And change yeah, it and he's, change got, it. he's gotten to the point where he is in the story. And yeah. then eventually he's just like, all right, I want to see if I can fix this. The ancient one pops up and splits the timeline. So there's another Dr. Strange. Well, first she explains that this is an impassable or a, uh, a, a, it's a, it's a point in time that can't be absolute changed. point in time. Yeah. It cannot be changed at all. This it's has the, to happen yeah. for Steven to like, become in order for you to even get the time stone. This has to happen. So this is an absolute point in time. It can't be changed. Mm-hmm. And he talks about someone who changed absolute points in time, goes back to do the research, goes to the library of, Gigli- Cagliostro mm-hmm. to learn some shits but then she, you know she fights him splits the timeline he spends centuries learning how to change centuries. it and absorbing then absorbing dark creatures yeah absorbing powers mythical creatures yeah absorbing all kinds of powers and then other Doctor Strange who was actually a good guy because she split the timelines goes yeah, back yeah the timeline where he didn't go back and the timeline where he just moved on exactly and so the moved on one goes back to fight and loses yeah. And it just ends in a dark way where dark Doctor Strange actually changes his absolute point in time. And then but then you, the universe encroaches on itself and, and collapses. And you kind of have an interesting wall break where he, he talks notices to the, watcher. the Watcher. He talks there. to the Watcher. And the Watcher's like, I can't can't do anything. Yeah, he's like, change it. You can change it. I'm sorry. Can you do, can you intervene? He's like, no. Strange even if I wanted to, you universe. don't understand. Like, even if I wanted to, I can't. It's kind of crazy. Because I was sitting there. I was like, okay, how is Strange going to beat him? He's clearly, Jordan had pointed out. Dude's just way more OP now. Yeah, because he's just you, but with all these powers. Yeah. And I was like, well... Oh, he doesn't beat him. <laughs> he yeah. gets the shit kicked in. He, he loses. Gets absorbed back in. Yep. And then he... It, it ends with him... Um, with his universe just encroaching on itself and, and sniveling out. Yeah. And he's just chilling there. Dark shit. I don't know he what next week gross. is. Yeah. But it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm excited for next week. I don't zombies. Know. Oh, always the zombie it. ones? Yeah. Oh, cool. And I guess the... um, You know the shot of Spider-Man with Strange's cape? Mm-hmm. That's... In that episode as well. Mm, so I guess cool. Spider Man's the one that fights him. I've been looking at a lot of stuff from the comics, the actual like what if zombie comic series yeah. as well. That thing goes crazy. Like yeah. it gets dark as well. Like Spider Man eating Aunt May and Hold Man. up, bro, spoiler bro. Well that I mean they might not go there. But they, but they might. Well if they do, who cares? I just don't think it'll I'm get excited. that dark. Yeah. Now let's spoil Shang Chi though. Okay. Good ass fucking movie, dog. I was not expecting it to be that good. I told you, dude. Like, I, was like, I told you, because this was the second time I watched it today. Well, because I think it was just so... I think it was spectacular. Well above expectations. Because mm-hmm. I was expecting, like, Black Widow, but a little better. Yeah, no. Nah, no, this is just... Good. Amazing. Yeah, it's so good. It, it was like, have I just been living in this world where I'm just... Marvel movies are top because they're Marvel, but now I have a top movie that's also a Marvel movie? Uh, yeah. It's actually just such it a really good movie. It doesn't feed off of past knowledge, really. I mean, yeah. there's some cool stuff with. If you, it only feeds Wong. off past knowledge at the end. Yeah, really. But I'm already bought in by that point yeah. because they do such a good job of like introducing you, the character. It feels like a thing where if you watch previous Marvels, you'll get references where it's like, oh, it's a world now where half the people can die. It, yeah. Like, if you watch Infinity War, of course you know that. But if you didn't watch any MCU movies, this is a perfect, perfectly watchable MCU movie. Yeah. Which is nice. There. I want to figure out something. The guy who's taking a video in the the train. Yeah. He's in another Marvel movie. Is he? I gotta remember he's which like, one. He's like, "Yo, uh, what's up? It's your boy Craig. I took some martial arts back in high school, so I'm gonna go ahead and grade Dude. this fight while it goes here for you." Dude what a good with camera. I the train. This is this point that I stand by. I think every s- singular, even minor, action scenes in um action fight scenes in Shang Chi. Every single one of them is better than 95% oh, yeah. of action fight, fight scenes, scenes in the rest of Marvel history. I think there's some really good ones. Um, the fight on Titan, of course, you know, that's like 
an iconic fight scene. Even um, then, it's uh, just Cap, cool. Cap beating on um, Bucky and Bucky beating on uh, Iron, Man. Iron Man. That's a good fight scene. The air, airport fight scene. But Shang-Chi fight scenes, even the minor ones, like where he's fighting his wife, his future wife, mm-hmm. and they're just having like a little wind battle or But whatever. most of these are just one-on-one fights. Exactly. Too. The other ones are cool because it's like team-up fights yeah. and you're seeing people use Him, all their variety of abilities. It's just well shot, yeah. well choreographed. Him fighting the guy with the mask with the knives mm-hmm. in the top of the skyscraper, even that one, so good. Every fight scene. So good. They're every single good. one is just so... It, it feel, uh, the way I put it when I first watched the movie with Adriana is like every single fight feels like a delicate dance. It's like... So perfectly choreographed. It's like you're watching a like a performance. Yeah. Every single one, and even even just like the regular action scenes, bro. The the chase scene and the fight scene with with the motorcycles, super tense and crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, the fucking the bus fight scene. Talk about a killer start. Oh yeah. When you watch that bus fight scene, you almost think that like oh they blew their load, bro. Like they to- they put it w- they top mm-hmm. heavy this bitch way too hard. Not even. No, not even close. The the bamboo um the bamboo scaffolding fight scene on the. On the skyscraper, so yeah. good. Especially when he's running to go save Katie before she falls, and he's like <laughs> dodging people, sliding in, jumping down, jumping up. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, what what else do you got? I think the final fight scene where he, it goes full Dragon Ball mode, so good. When, oh, when he's like he shoots the rings into um yeah the, the monster and yeah. then pulls it back. That looks that, so good. With when from the moment that she says go, and then he starts to run, and then jumps, and the camera does—I don't know what the fuck the camera's doing. I don't know how much of it is CG, but when it's like all close up to him, and he's like jumping, and he runs, and then he like throws two rings down and jumps on the rings, mm-hmm. and then swings on a third ring, and then comes around and like grabs the rings. He pumps all ten in to shoot himself yeah, up. Exactly. They back out the camera, yeah. and you see it all. It's so. And then he comes slamming back down. It's so close. And you don't really know what's going on, but it's so intense. And the camera's like doing crazy tricks, like rotating and spinning. And he's just like, Boo-boo. and he's like running and dodging and sliding under a thing and doing all that stuff. That little sequence, that little like 10 second sequence, I was just like, oh, holy shit. Yeah. And then he, he hits, he hits the move, kills the monster, floats back down. The dragons, like him getting the dragon initially. I figured out where Clet is from. Where's like, he from? He's also... And Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah. When Spider Man's doing like just regular stuff around the city, like uh-huh. helping people. And he's like, Hey, thanks. What's your name? Spider Man. Thanks, Spider Man. Really? Yeah, he's just a guy on the street. Wow, the MC is great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's so funny. But Didn't that, even know that. That's in New York. And they, oh, we were in we were in California, weren't we? San Francisco, yeah. This Man's is post moving. This is post snap. Yeah, it's like uh, nine yeah. years in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah that's we fair. do. That's fair. Yeah, it's post snap and everything. But like all of those fight scenes, so good. I thought all the character developments uh, were good. Uh, Lucas had a point that he he didn't like how he, he felt that the sister was useless in the end. I didn't really get that. I thought she did good she, with her little spin thing, fighting mm-hmm. all the things, and then she's the one who brought the dragon back to yeah. She helped the, the dragon so. out. I thought that was fun. She, um, she's whooping up on uh, Razor yeah. Fist. I like yeah Razor Fist. I liked um, fucking Aquafina's character. I loved Aquafina's character. I thought she was great. Yeah, and I was surprised that they kind of take it. Into a love interest at the end. Yeah. Where I'm, I'm pretty well, sure that's I don't what know. they're going if, for. I don't think so. I think it's still. I feel the opposite way. I felt it's refreshing they didn't shoehorn romance into a platonic relationship. It kind of gets that way at the end, though. Like, not it really. Feels like it a little bit. I don't think so. I don't. Well, I'm also tired of Aquafina just not ever being the romance. Completely only being the comedic. That's what she does best. I know, but I enjoyed Kevin Hart and Fatherhood. Sure. It'd be cool if she had a more serious relationship. With I her. love her character in this film, though. Oh, I agree. I think Katie is great. I think all of her jokes are so fucking funny. I all do, of them. I do agree with someone who said, like, half the comedic relief is just someone saying, holy shit. Yeah. It's still good, But though. it's good, though. Because <laughs> that's what I'm saying, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Which is like, oh, holy shit. And then it's a real good villain, too. Yeah. I love Oh, yeah. He was great. And you, like, you kind of feel for him because it's like he's not – necessarily like super evil he kind of changed his ways and this is years well, in the and future then, and then at the end it's like it's not his own his willpower is at a, a complete all-time low yeah and he's, he's being, being manipulated to. yeah yeah exactly it's really so it's not fault. really him he and then he ends up giving the rings to his son which is great mm-hmm. even that fight scene great dude mm-hmm. oh my god when he catches the five rings yeah and he's like it's like waving him he even hits yeah. him with he even hits him with a kamehameha bro Shoots well, he him. doesn't well he, he's about to he's about to, about to murder he, his dad and he's throw like, it down so good. Him catching the rings. 
reenacting the fight scene from earlier where the dad did the, yeah, the upward the flip. Uh, that one, oh. that's the mom one where he reenacts that. I'm talking about the one where like they're fighting on the beach and his dad does the flipping kick. Mm-hmm. It goes back to him and he does the flipping kick on his dad and that's the one where his dad's like holding Oh, are you bitch. talking about when he has the five on his arm? Yeah. He's walking it and he's got the five on his leg? Yeah, exactly. Dude, it's <laughs> so good, dude. Oh my God. It's such a, it's so pretty to watch. Oh, too. yeah. And visually, great. When you go into the mystic realm or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. Tallow, it's like, wow, what what the fuck? This is great. And then, like, you get the nine tails, the mm-hmm. nine tailed foxes. You get those, like, Cerberus, like, monster lion looking yeah. things. Even the little wing dudes. And bringing back the Mandarin to write, to write that in, great. great. Perfect mm-hmm. use of him. I know, because you're like, man, especially for, like, us comic book nerds or whatever, we're like, man, what are they going to do there? Because that was the Mandarin, but now we got the Mandarin. And they fully address yeah. that, where he's like, he took my name, and he did it, and he appropriated it. And then bringing him back to be like, oh, uh, uh, Trevor, um, actor from Liverpool. Mm-hmm. I was like, yes, dude, let's go. I cannot believe this it guy's back. Funny. Yeah. And I'll put on a weekly performance. Yeah. Kind of feels the exact – the voice and the humor, kind of same role as Korg, I feel like. Yeah. Because the whole time I'm listening, so I good. hear Korg. Yeah. Just because the delivery is the same. Yeah. I entertain but, him once a week. Yeah. So good. Uh, I went into my uh, my uh, my rendition of Macbeth. Um, the the fucking joke where he's like, I watched Mastery go on the screen before me, Planet of the Na- Planet <laughs> of the Apes, and it turns I, out the apes. I asked my aunt how they make the apes do that. She said they were acting. I was like, if they can make apes act like that. Imagine what I can do. Imagine what I could do. So still, you became an actor know. because you thought the apes were acting? Yeah, I thought they were really riding horses. But it turns out they were com- acting like they were riding horses. It still so, confuses me to this day. Yeah, so good. He's such a dumbass character and all his jokes. Like <laughs> when, when he's talking about Morris, he's like, Morris, is a, he's a mystical being from another land. Uh, yeah. You j- we don't the infinite wisdom. on his tongue. Oh, yeah. he says go. Yeah. yeah we're good. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, so good. Oh, man. He plays the perfect role. Um, all of it's great. Having the uh, mom from Crazy Rich Asians um, in this movie, yep. I cannot remember her name. Um, oh, teaching. Tan? Teaching, maybe. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's her name in the movie. I think. I think that's well, Tan. she says, I'm your nan. I think she says her name's Tan. Something like that. But she does say, I'm your nan something. Or, I'm no, your I, no, her name's Nan. She. I'm your no, aunt, auntie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ping-nam. Um. So she... Michelle she's, Yeoh. Yeah, she's a really good uh, character. I like the kind of the theme of this film. Cause, and you have it the whole way through, which is like finding yourself and knowing yourself and accepting yourself. Even with Katie's side character, there's a whole little thing that she has with her mom about, you know, I know I know what I, I want to do. I can do I, stuff, exactly. just like... Can't. And then when they're talking to their friends in the beginning, it's like, oh, you guys have all these things and you never use them. And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. we're going to be happy with our life. And so I it's like, like a it's whole a very relatable topic for people our age. Too. Yeah, it's it's like super good. And then the whole thing where she's like, look, you killed these guys. You did these bad things. but And you're a product of all the things that came before. You have to accept like you in order for you to use the true power of the dragon. Like you have to accept both. Sides. It's the yin yeah. and yang, the yin and yang. You, you have to your accept mother's so child good. and your father's child. So good. Mm-hmm. Um, the way they explain the past of like the dark thing by using the little wooden carvings. I just I enjoyed every single aspect of this movie. And for me, it was an easy, instantaneous slot of that number three um, in terms well, of we'll like the Marvel movies. We'll get there. I the post show. L- loved it. Yeah. So good. So anyway, that's it for this episode of the Sync That Podcast. Go ahead, Filmcast. Dude. Man, that movie's so good. So good. Um, we'll cu- we'll catch you guys in the next one. If you paid us five bucks to- on Patreon to get access to the post show that we're about to do, we'll see you in a few minutes. Everybody else, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. I want to watch that. One- Hold up. Did you watch what? the one shot? Nope. With the Mandarin. I didn't. Can we watch that? Uh, uh. Goodbye. Tomorrow. <laughs>